What's up, guys? I'm Tyler. And I'm Brittany. And we're Wallace Farm and Sawmill. Check it out, guys. This is what I want to do today. I told you in the last video on the 4th of July that the next video, I'm going to teach you a little something. You're going to learn something today from me, or you'll learn what not to do. Your choice. So check it out. What I got down here today is a small pine log. I think it's like 10, 11 inches and big end probably nine inches on the little end down there okay basic log most people that have sawmills and whatnot can get a hold of these things let me flip you around and show you some stuff okay so there's nothing special it's not a super huge log it's just an easy everyday like if you if you're in the sawmill world and you have little sawmills big sawmills or whatever logs like this are available everywhere there's nothing special about this so what i want to do is take a basic log and show you some basics of how to sawmill okay we're not going in depth we're not talking curve allowances or look we're talking about i gotta i need to throw a shed up and i need some one by some two by's like basic sawmill and this is basic sawmill in 101 okay so to start this off what i want to show you is when you come around here to your sawmill you notice whatever sawmill you got especially if you have a manufactured sawmill that's you know pre-made not a homemade meal you know they got your scales okay so that basically what that does is that tells me if you see this 12 inches where it's set right now if i get in line with it you can see it's right on 12 inches that tells me the height of this blade to this bunk that the logs are resting on okay so the first thing a person would do is that's new to saw milling would be to get your head close like so and sight down that log okay now from my experience over time it gets easier and easier to sight and, and and know where to start at but basically to know where to start what you want to do is figure what's the most narrow board that you could use and you want to get that face off the top now what i mean is for me Today, we're gonna to saw two by fours out of this. And when I say two by fours, for my application, it's inch and a half by three and a half, okay? These are going into pallet products. So basically, I need to open up, my first cut needs to remove a slab just big enough that leaves a three and a half inch board on top, width-wise, okay? So let's start up, and I'm gonna remove that just gandering at this log right now i'm probably gonna go ahead and drop down a half inch we're gonna open this cut up at 11 inches so let's take this one off All right, guys, I had to come back, take another half inch off there. But now, if you look down through there, my first cut opened up. And if you'll look and you just imagine, I'll run a two before right through the center of that. Okay, so there's my first board is there. Okay, so I've just removed the slab. The next thing we want to do, I always like to pick my head up so the blade doesn't drag. I got a squeaky, uh, bearing that needs fixing but 
but I'll get that. So the next thing we want to do is, is we have to take one more cut off that to get a good flat face, and I'm gonna grab that board off the top. Now, I told you my board's gonna be inch and a half by three and a half. So for when you're not, it was a 10 inch cut, okay? So we're gonna go a nine inch and a half inch. That's it. For the, my application, curve allowance is not a, an issue that I have to worry about. If my boards are a 16th or a hair over a 16th from being perfect, it doesn't matter in this pallet application. So remember, we're doing the basics. So now I'm gonna make that cut, take that board off. here of what you can do if you set your meal up correctly then you have made sure that your backstops are perfectly 90 degrees to your bed frame okay and what that means is let me lift this off so I can show you what that means is with these standing up straight they are completely at a 90 degree angle to this backstop on the bottom. Now your two options here. One, since they are set up and you made sure they were 90 degrees, if you watch that gap as it closes, when I get that log right there, if I clamp that log right there, then that log is 90 degrees to the bed and I will make a 90 degree angle. What you can do is, Come here, slide your clamp, there you go, okay? Your second option would be to go ahead and lay this face down flat. For a beginner, I probably would start right there. I'd lay that on down flat, meaning turn it one more time and let that flat sit on that bump. But I, I like to run them like this. I like to know that these are 90. Got a little piece of bar right here, ain't no big deal. But I like to know that they're 90 degrees and I like to make a 90 degree angle now. So let's do that now. have a square out here with me but now I have a 90 degree angle on this log now for my application right now I don't need to go down any further I'm gonna go ahead and turn this okay guys so now here's where you got to make a you see you have a 90 degree angle you got a flat and your 90 degree angle now is where you're gonna make your decision of how wide of a board am I looking to get if you're looking for six seven eight inches whatever it is and how long will your log make if I wanted to make six inch wide boards out of this, I would look, is there a board that I can get off the top before I get to six inches? Basically, what you would do is, because we want a six inch board, so we want to turn that cant up and then make six inch boards. So what you want to do is start at seven, okay? And come down here and look at it and say, okay, 
if I were to make that seven inch cut first, can I get a good board before I get to six inches? That way you're not wasting any lumber off of the side cuts. And in this situation, I'm pretty sure, yeah, you could. Now for me, I'm going to make this two three and a half inch cans. Three and a half plus three and a half equals seven. So I'm going to seven. But my side cut lumber is inch and a half, okay? Now follow the math here. I need to find out, before I just go to seven and split it, is there another inch and a half board available to me? So I will go to eight and a half inches first. And then I'm gonna run that up there and I'm gonna look, okay? What are we noticing here? It's not available. I won't be able to take a slab and get an inch and a half board. It's just not available. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go to my number, number seven, and I'm going to make that pass. trying something a little different so I'm slowing this down and showing you something here. This is a little different than all our other videos so if you want to check out our other videos it's a little different format come down here with me I want to show you something that was that seven inch cut okay I now have a seven inch three-sided cam one side's flat two sides flat the third size 90 degrees to that that's a three-sided cam okay now, for me, I need two of those three and a half inch cans because I'm going to turn them up at three and a half and split them, okay? So what I need to do now is take seven, divided by two, and make three and a half inch cans. So I'm going to come from seven where I was, and I'm going to go all the way down to three and a half, okay? For our application, this is what we're doing. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't split hearts. We're not getting into that. This is basic sawing, basic stuff my application this works okay so we're going to split that seven inch can directly down the middle at three and a half inches let's do that two three and a half inch cans with a flat bottom okay three sided cans what I want to do is turn these up now if you come right here and you look at these boards you'll notice as you dander down through here and here you got the same size board we split it right down the middle that's three and a half and that's three and a half so if we want to make two before nominal two before widths out of these all we need to do now is find a point, this is one I want to talk about. I've watched a lot of guys out there saw milling in YouTube world, and I can't get over this. They will start random places in this log, okay? And they'll get down to the bottom and realize, oh, I gotta take a one inch here to end up with a one and a half down here. That's no good, you don't do that, okay? If there's going to be any waste in this log, because my goal is to get two by fours out of this log, I want as many two by fours as I can get from this one log. Okay? So, what you got to do is this you need to know your starting points. And your starting points 
have to be numbers divisible by your last number. Inch and a half is what we're doing now. We've already got it at three and a half. We got two three and a half inch cuts. So now we need to find numbers divisible by an inch and a half so that we can end up on our last cut being an inch and a half, okay? If there's gonna be any waste, again, you want the waste off the top, off your junk, not, not out of your good lumber, okay? Inch and a half is divisible into three and any number divisible by three is divisible by an inch and a half, okay? It's basic math. So 12 divisible by three, yes. That's a good starting point because it would end up at an inch and a half. Let me give you an example. Follow my scale. Basically, you need to know starting points. 12 inches, if I go down, which is divisible by three, remember, three inches, four times, 12 inches, okay? So if I go inch and a half to 10 and a half, inch and a half to nine, inch and a half to seven and a half, inch and a half to six, inch and a half to four and a half, inch and a half to three, and what does that leave me on at my last cut? An inch and a half. That's as basic as I can tell you. You need to know what your last cut is so that you can take your scrap off the top. Don't get down here and start at 10 inches. Random number. 10 and a half is where you should be starting if you want to end on an inch and a half. But let's just say you started at 10 inches. Now follow this out real quick. If I go an inch and a half, I'm eight and a half. If I go inch and a half, I'm at seven. Inch and a half, I'm at five and a half. Keep going. Inch and a half, I'm at four. Inch and a half, I'm at two and a half. Inch and a half, I'm at one. Now, what good does that one inch? We got a perfectly square bottom. I need two by fours out of this log. What good would it do to start at 10 and wind up with a one before on the bottom? That's a no-no. Don't do that. Know the correct number to start with. Now, if I were doing one buys, I'd start on a whole number. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. No problem, right? Inch and a half, same thing. Just find whatever it's divisible by. A good trick with uh, inch and a half is it's divisible by 3. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. You can start on that and you'll end up at an inch and a half. Backing off an inch and a half each time. Uh, three quarters, you have to do a little bit more math. But you get it. You get where I'm going at it if you don't. We'll watch it over and think about it, and you'll kind of realize what I'm stepping in. So now let's start by finding our first number. We want to go down here. Nine inches. That's divisible by three. Inch and a half is our goal on the bottom. If I look at that, not really going to make a board right there. You see what I'm saying? It's kind of hard to tell from the camera angle, but that nine inches ain't really going to get enough off the top to matter. So my next available number to start at is seven and a half because nine inches minus one and a half, seven and a half inches. So let's take that slab off at seven and a half and then we're gonna go six, four and a half, three, one and a half. And that's done and I'll show you the pile of two by fours we're left with, okay? Alright guys, so what I went ahead and did was, like I said, found my starting number and went all the way through. And if you look, each one of those boards is an inch and a half thick, three and a half inches wide, so that I could get as many two by fours out of it for my application. My application is getting pallet wood out of this thing. And that's how I got the most out of it. And we'll go take these over and chop those to 40 inch lengths, which is one of the reasons why we don't have to worry as much about little details on these because these are used for a rough purpose. They're not used for any finished form of anything. So, again, I want to reiterate, you want to get the most out of it. So you need to know your starting number so you know how to go through and have a pattern so that everything equals the same like you, like, like you want. You want inch and a half boards out of this? I need to get the most inch and a half boards. I don't need to randomly come down through here and be like, oh, well, if I want to end at inch and a half, I'll have to take one inch here, or I'll have to take a half inch here so that this works. You don't want to do that. Get the first number to start with and start there. If you have any waste, you want your waste to come out of that slab that comes off the top. All right, guys, it's a hot one. 
I went over the basics. This video is not for anything in depth. This video is not for anything in particular. You don't have to pick us out in the comments. This is the basics of how to saw a log. And you could watch this video and you probably could saw a log just knowing these few basic mechanics of the way that sawing lumber works. We'll go further in detail through this video series as we do it. Every couple weeks, I'm gonna put out another video. This will be part one of the basics of how to saw a log. Later on, we'll deep dive into some other subjects of, of curve and uh, tension in logs and how to avoid it and how to work with it. There's many subjects we could choose here. This is video number one, the basics, how to saw a log. Um, if you guys like this type of content and you wanna see more stuff like this, maybe even on the daily, I did just start a Patreon out there. We're posting on it regular. I've got a couple guys now that have joined along. I'm very happy with that. Uh, we're gonna continue to do that in the near future, but you know where to find us anyway, right here on YouTube. If you guys like this content, you wanna see more of this in the future, I want you to like, comment, and subscribe. I appreciate you guys watching these videos and I'd like for you to keep watching them. Uh, it does help push them if you do all those things like comment and subscribing. So until next time, guys. See ya.